on the touch I'm lying and if I ain't correct. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, there's good and the bad news. Good news for true boxing fans, bad news for everybody that went against new media because new media is here to stay. And the problem is, I'm not only telling you my opinions, but a lot of what I'm saying, I'm showing you guys with facts. So, I want to do this video about Guillermo Rigondeaux versus everybody right Guillermo Rigondeaux is one of the most avoided fighters in boxing today now with new media I show you guys the things now I figured this is the perfect time to do this video on the heels of Carl Frampton versus Leo Santa Cruz that is a very good fight but I cannot say that fights name without mentioning the fact that they both left the division in order to not fight Guillermo Rigondeaux Carl Frampton he fought Quig cashed out got a good paycheck remained undefeated beat him and moved up to face another money guy like a Leo Santa Cruz when Rigondeaux was his mandatory in his former division. Same thing with Leo Santa Cruz. Rigondeaux was on his back trying to call him out. He says, come see me. Even after his last fight, come see me if you want your jaw broken. Speaking of broken jaws, as you guys seen in the thumbnail, his last opponent, Rigondeaux, keep in mind this is a guy who's been inactive. So the thing that I have to illustrate for you guys is Guys like Andre Ward, guys like Guillermo Rigondeaux, they're technicians. They are very skilled fighters. And in an effort to downplay them or blackball them from boxing, make them no longer relevant, fans always bring up their inactivity because their career has had dry spells of inactivity. But to me, that's actually more impressive when they do what they do because Ward, people kept saying, oh, he only fought three times in five years or whatever it's been. Rigondeaux, he's inactive, and we know why they're inactive. Rigondeaux, because he's been avoided. He didn't have a promoter that was really pushing him. They blackballed him. Ward had legal trouble. He had injuries. So we know why they're inactive. It wasn't like Ward had a drinking problem and he couldn't get his act together, so he kept going to jail or something. We know why these guys are inactive. Same thing with Rigondeaux, right? And in an effort to bash them with their their sideline issues like inactivity to me that makes them more impressive when Ward comes back after a year layoff and only fighting Paul Smith and not having really any major fights in between before that and he dominates Kovalev's mandatory like Sullivan Brera very skilled Cuban puncher who was undefeated at the time right when Rigondeaux has all this inactivity comes back and in two rounds he breaks his opponent's jaw to the point where they cannot continue with a single shot right but a lot of people they're gonna tell you something different you guys can believe what you I empower you guys to you don't have to take my word for it but I show you you know what I mean with new media I'm showing you a lot of people say oh Rigondeaux he's born you got to prove that to me because Rigondeaux in fact has a higher knockout percentage than Leo Santa Cruz and Carl Frampton so why is the boring guy breaking people's jaw more than one Carl Frampton broke Scott Quigg's jaw also but Rigondeau broke a Magasaw's jaw as well as his last opponent, Jazza Dickens. And he had Nonito Donaire backpedaling with one hand over his eye in the 12th round seeing doubles. Now, had that happened in the 11th round, he might have been able to stop a guy like Donaire. But Donaire's big, Donaire's tough, and he's a veteran. So he wasn't able to do anything beyond that because that was the final round. So um, the whole boring, oh, I put Rigondeau, you guys sound corny. I put Rigondeau on before I go to sleep puts my kids to bed like I mean this stupid like I said before when it comes to Street Fighter that game would be boring as hell if every fighter fought like Zangief slow plotting move forward if they're in arm's reach and they grab you they're gonna pile drive you and destroy you because they're very strong I don't want to see that I want to see Zangief versus Blanca an acrobat who might electrocute you you know what I mean Blanca's going crazy doing backflips and jumping all over the fucking place same thing with Chung Lee she's jumping stabbing you in the top of the head with her heels doing that spinning star kick and like flipping upside down you got Ken and Ryu you know what I mean that's what makes the game fun and that's the same thing with boxing I wouldn't want to see everybody fight like Rigan now because everything would be a chess match 
I don't want to see everyone fight like Ruslan Provotnikov because everything would be like a mindless war with no defense. You know what I mean? Styles make fights, and that's what makes boxing, for me, interesting. You know what I mean? You seeing a mate, weather, and in there with the Manny Pacquiao, guy who's not textbook but awkward with power, and a southpaw versus the technician. Those are some of the best fights. You look at Sugar Ray Leonard versus Roberto Duran. You look at Edislandi Lada versus Alfredo Angulo. Right? You put Lada in there with another technician, then it may be a chess match and it may not entertain as much as Angulo. Angulo will take five punches to get one punch off, but if he lands that one punch, you might get hurt, which is why he knocked down Edislandi Lada. Right? So that's what it is. Ring now is avoided. I don't care what anybody says. Leo Santa Cruz versus Carl Frampton. I will do my post fight. It is a good fight, but both guys avoided this man, Guillermo Rigandao. And it is what it is. A lot of people want to say all this stuff. Oh, oh, he's boring. He puts me to sleep. Then you put him to sleep and rid the world of Rigandao. But the thing is, the people who back all these other fighters in or around the division, they don't want to see them fight Rigan now because they know Rigan now has a high probability of beating those guys. And most people are probably confident that he will beat those guys. So they'd rather protect their fighter. And that's not from the cloth or the school of boxing that I'm from. I like the old school boxing where, you know what I mean, we want to see the best versus the best. And it's only so long that these people can run from him. But you look at this picture of Jaza Dickens, and I mean, that's from a single shot. Everyone wants to be a critic. Everyone wants to critique Rigandau like, oh, he should have got more aggressive. His fights are boring. He should have threw more punches. Why does he have to if with a single shot, he's breaking his man's jaw and he cannot continue in two rounds? So obviously his accuracy and his efficiency with his punch count, that's all that is required. Meanwhile, you guys, you got guys like Leo Santa Cruz. He has to break you down. He has to throw 100 plus punches around because his power is not necessarily there. His accuracy is not necessarily there. So he almost has to do that because that's his style. He has to wear you down, grind you down, just workman like bow, 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 bow. Rigandau, he showed time and time again. He just has to be sir and you're, you're, you're toast. You know what I mean? Rigandau, imagine if he did let his hands go like Leo Santa Cruz. You know what I mean? And maintained his defense. These dudes would really be in trouble. So it's all about working smarter, not harder. If he can break your jaw with single shots and throwing 15 punches around and you can't do nothing about it, then he's winning. You know what I mean? There's no point to throw 100 punches and abandon your defense if you don't have to. If you have the skills to pay the bills. And I, I made a video about this, the art of running, prelude to an ass whooping. Go check that video out because... New media is here, man. It's, it's it's getting bad for you guys that that want to use all these excuses. Oh, he ran. That's I know certain matchups when it goes the distance. I always look for that. It's like we're living in the age of boxing where if it goes the distance and a guy uses some movement, no matter what, they're getting called a runner, and that's going to be the scapegoat. So I look forward to it at the end of fights. Oh, he ran. Postal couldn't beat Crawford because he ran. But what about when? Postal turned his back. I covered that fight live. I was very close to the ring. He turned his back and literally ran to evade shots from Crawford, right? When Crawford was baiting him in the 12th round and he was like, come on, and he was walking forward, why was Postal backing up, backtracking? He should have been like, yes, finally, I got this dude where I want him. He wants to have a slugfest. Let's do it. But that's not the case, and we all know it's not the case. Postal was getting hurt in there. There was never a time where I really seen Crawford in danger, any real danger, buckled or hurt. I seen him hurt in the Gamboa fight because Styles make fights, but not with Postal. So every time there was there were like exchanges, combinations thrown, it was usually Postal getting the worst of, of the fight. You know what I mean? Of those exchanges. Same thing with Reagan now, right? People always say, oh, this person ran and stuff like that. Then why doesn't Donaire, since he's much bigger than Reagan now, pull forward, like bum rush him and just knock him out? Because he can't. He knows if he comes in reckless, he will get sat down, possibly slept. And that's what happens when you're technically gifted, when you have speed, when you have accuracy. A person has to be cautious, right? Just think of approaching let's say a bunny rabbit you know what i mean bunny rabbits aren't known for being vicious so you were trying to corner one that's different than trying to to corner a cobra and then get a cobra in a bag you know what i mean at one false move a rattlesnake or a cobra 
might strike and vipe your ass and bite your ass and, and start injecting venom in you. You know what I mean? You don't really have to worry about that with a, a bunny rabbit. So if these fighters are just running, then you have nothing to worry about. But obviously, it's more than just quote unquote running. They're doing something and it's the ability to fuck you up. If you keep coming forward, if you have no game plan, if you're not being conscious of how you're moving forward and pushing forward, it's not going to be a good look for you. Ask Jazza Dickens, which I hope he makes a speedy recovery, and ask Amagasa, a guy who came down in weight to fight Riganel. And that's the thing, Riganel's tiny, but his skills pay the bills. And it's funny because a lot of guys are celebrated. I like these fighters too, like let's say Canelo Triple G, but when's the last time we seen someone who was bigger and stronger and their skills had to take over, where they couldn't overpower the guy because the guy was naturally much bigger and much stronger, taller, bigger, stronger, and they had to use their skills to fight off the ropes to evade shots otherwise one false move they would get knocked out we don't really see that with a lot of top level names that are celebrated where they're the smaller man in there and their skills necessarily are are the things that say me not to say canelo or triple d don't have skills because they do but it's it's different a lot of times they're more they're they're heavy on the offensive skills and less on the defensive side right and mainly more I would say more so Triple G because Canelo actually has some some pretty slick moves in there like with this fight with Kodo he just doesn't always use it the same but in the Kodo he showed you he was slipping punches he was rolling with he was doing a lot of good shit in there right so that's what it is I'm not gonna bring up too many other fighters but rigging out is a problem I will watch Carl Frampton versus Leo Santa Cruz but one of these guys got to give him a shot you know what I mean and rigging out says he's down to break anyone's jaw anybody who's saying that that oh uh, he puts me to sleep stuff then it's up to the opponent to engage just like postal crawford that could have been a war we could have seen a knockout and i guarantee you if postal came in there with no game plan and just went for broke like james kirkland did with canelo we probably would have got that knockout because he was losing all those exchanges and i don't know if his power was really affecting crawford right so that's what it is rigging out is a beast drop it in the comment section make sure you like my video as always hate comment and subscribe tell next video is ego son you know. so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing